Good morning and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. I'm Lynn and today it's starting out looking like a really nice day. Arnie's gonna get out to the fields and start planting barley today. This cultivator is done and we're just gonna go in and see what the rest of the day has in store for us. First things first, we gotta get water to the use in the jugs. We still have two in jugs right now. Hi, you guys. One done. You need some too. I guess you need your bottle. Is that the that the hint? I see you're hinting at something. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll get these guys fed. These are the three bottle babies. Hi guys. I know you will gotta come out first and then we'll go in. Come on. Come on. Come on, Lammy. This way. You pushed yours out, sweetheart. Okay. Follow those three at that, or at that. I'll go do the rest of the barn. This is the main barn. And uh, once that's done, we'll head to the coveralls. That's the nice thing about them being on a bottle holder. So uh, I can give them their bottles and walk off and get other things done. And then I'll come back and uh, clean up after them. Here's Chewy. She's come up to visit. We're in uh, Gimli's breeding group right now. Gimli's our Dorset Ram. I'm in here cleaning the water drinkers because, uh, I, as you know, I clean them every day. And even cleaning every day, this is another one of those uh, plastic bottomed uh, water drinkers that we really don't like at all. They don't stay warm very well and they're extremely hard to clean. This is, you can see the water's crystal clear because I just cleaned it, but that debris, um, discoloring and stuff is built up that even with wire brushes, it pretty well doesn't come off. So um, I recommend the steel bottom drinkers uh, by far. But while we're in here, I thought we'd have a look at how this breeding group's doing. I am in here with a ram, Gimli, so <clears throat> when you go into breeding groups, uh, rams can be a little more temperamental. So you gotta know your sheep, know your rams especially, and even if you have a mild manner sheep, just always watch your back. Um, Gimli's back here. Gimli's a very approachable ram and has never caused any problems for us, so. Hi, you look extremely pretty. Oh, everyone looks good in here. They're calm. She's a first timer. She's one of our Dorset Suffolk crosses. We don't have too many of those because she was actually an accident. Hi guys, we're on to clean the next pen. These are the other two breeding groups, the Dorset breeding groups. I can see their hay needs kicking in. Can you see the line down the feeder? That's where they couldn't quite reach. So, we just kick all that into them. all kicked in. 
And now everybody's happy again. They're all eating. Uh, this barn also has a ram on each side. We use single sire breedings because we're doing registered sheep. Even if we were doing commercial, we would do it the same way because uh, single sire, you know who your lambs are from. And that way, if you want to keep replacements, you um, will know who's related to who and you'll have no inbreeding going on. People use multiple sires when they're not keeping any of their lambs because it doesn't matter. But we, uh, we are in the breeding stock business, so we need to know who each and every lamb is sired by. And, that's, and we're in Gaston's group right now. He's also, um, Gaston's not much of a pet, not uh, a friendly ram like Gimli, but he's not aggressive at all either. I can walk in the pen with him and if he's going to do anything, it would be run away. So, but never say never. Always watch rams when you're in with them. So they're fed. Um... Just, we just knocked down the salt and mineral. We always make sure they have that fresh every day. And onto their drinker, which is a metal bottomed drinker, which is much easier to clean out. If it doesn't look too slimy, I just brush out the debris. And if it's getting built up, I'll get a little scrubby and just rinse it out and pull the plug. This is our final breeding group. And that's our ram, Fargo. Also a mild-mannered ram. This is a Dorset ewe that we bought in at the Humboldt Classic. She doesn't have a name. But... It's funny because Angel and Big Betty, who you know of our sheep, I always told you that uh, they were identifiable by the spot on their ear. And this one has a spot on the ear too, in the exact, on the exact same ear. And she's not related, but has the exact same personality and temperament. So is there a correlation between right ear spots and the friendly gene? Hmm. Maybe some university guy can do a study on that. <laughs> but she's a real sweetheart. Hi. You're really, really nice. Yes, you're really, really nice. Hi. Hi. Do you like Gimli? Gimli's a really nice ram. He is. Hi. Oh, you're nice. Look at those cute lips. How can anyone not love pink nose sheep? Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go let the rams out because Arnie is going to the field. He's gonna go plant the barley. And I noticed that the rams didn't have any hay in their feeders. So I'm gonna make an executive decision and let them out in the little pasture so that they can uh, run around. It's a little wet, but the grass is long and I'm thinking it's not gonna hurt them. The trick will be to get through all these rams to the gate without getting trampled. Hi boys. But you see, the, the feeders are empty and there's nice green grass there, so I'm gonna go open that. So I'm in their pen, just cleaned out their drinker. Uh, even though the rams are outside all year round, uh, in this lean-to, they do have a covered drinker where they can drink out of the weather. And uh, we also have the salt and mineral holder for them, which is also just under the, the lean-to. So they still have access to all that stuff. And they do have shelter and a beautiful south-facing view. I'm gonna run over to the other gate because I don't want them in the big field. And I see they're all coming out, so I gotta run. It's a little mucky in this field, so Arnie probably won't let me, like me, let him out, but.
We have a, like, a little gate here so that stops them from going into the big pasture. days for these boys. So this would be their first time out on lush pasture and normally if you're letting sheep out for the first time and it's really green like this you do want to limit their intake on the grass because they could bloat it's like a kid in a candy shop. They uh, they tend to gorge out when it's something really good. But this is a really, really small paddock. It's more like a holding paddock. So with this amount of sheep, uh, it's very unlikely these guys would bloat even if they were left out all day. But when uh, we let the ewes out for the first time because they're going into a much bigger pastures, uh, usually what we do is we feed them dry hay first to get their bellies full and then let them out. And if the grass is really, really lush, we may pull them in um, at lunchtime and leave them in for the rest of the day and then slowly increase the time that they stay outside so they get used to the grass and seems to work. We don't have too many bloating issues. I see we got Scotty and Tom here. Not too often you see Tom out with us. Here's Scotty, because Tom's not very friendly. But um, I, the cats must be getting along a bit better now. I don't hear them fighting and they were together. And Scotty here is always in the ram paddock because he loves the rams. And the rams love him, as you see. They come over especially to see him. And these Dorset rams that you see in here with the suffix, we'll be using them as the cleanup rams on the breeding groups that we have going now. Cleanup rams are just um, a, kind of like a security blanket in case the original ram wasn't working. A second ram can come in and See if he missed anybody. The rams know that that's the gate over there. They want to go out into the big field. But for today, they're going to stay in the little one. Hi, Hamish. How you doing? Hi, Glad. Hi. Hi. You like the grass, hey? Eh? Say goodbye to those guys and we'll head on out to the coveralls. Okay, bottles mixed for the coverall. We'll take them over there now and get those guys done. Like this lamb was just nursing. I don't know if you can see the milk on his lips. You look like you're a little big to be nursing right now. You really need to do that? Hey? You're a big baby, I think. Yeah. We'll head back and see how the planting's going now that I've done all the chores for this morning. If you look in this barn, this is uh, the Dorset Fall Ram Lambs. They got their divider wall, and then on the other side of them is our dry use. And then on this side, we have all the March mom and lamb, mom using lambs. And we're gonna head out to the back. You can see them back there. So 
the field looks extremely dry today. I guess it's a warm day. You can see he has those duels on. That's the 16 foot corn planter. But he also plants barley, which we're planting now, and corn. So barley is the first crop in because it can take cooler conditions. And uh, the other beans and corn need a little bit warmer before you can stick it into the ground. Otherwise it will rot. I'm not sure if those rows are evident to you, but um, if we look closely here, basically, you can see the barley seed right on top of the ground. You would think it would be in deeper than that. Hard to believe that those would grow. I know if I put them in my flower garden like that, they wouldn't. <laughs> So these are the end of the hay fields and pastures, and those are our barns up there. Everything's greening up nicely. So as you guys see, um, from our daily vlogs, farming is a 24-7 job and uh, you really have to enjoy it. A lot of people are buying sheep from us and they're wanting to start up and, and they want to know if they can make a living doing sheep and you know that's a question that's impossible to answer unless you know someone's financial situation. But it's getting harder and harder to make a living farming unless you've had your farm handed to you by your parents or a couple of generations down and they keep passing it along in the family. Those are the operations uh, where it's pretty hard to fail. Um, but if you have to buy it, it used to be you could pick up a small hobby farm. Those are getting rarer and rarer as the big farmers buy them out. Um, you're looking at millions of dollars for most farms nowadays and that's just for the farm alone and then you've got all the equipment on top of that and the livestock and um, then you have to sell product to a market where they decide what they're going to pay you that day. Um, our our um, John Deere dealer said uh, to us one day, what other job would you take where you work every day and then at the end of the day when you bring your product in, the, the buyer will say, I think it's worth that much, take it or leave it. Um, and that is how it is, it's take it or leave it. So prices can be good or they can be really bad you could break even you could even lose money on your year's work um, and people talk about lamb prices being high this year but uh, we figured that uh, even though lamb prices are a little bit higher everything else has gone up astronomically um, repairs um, hiring people in to do uh, combining and stuff like that, uh, seed costs, fertilizers sky high, fuel. Um, we figure we're actually probably making less this year than we were in the past. So um, not to be discouraging, but that is why um, if you're handy, it really, really helps because you can uh, buy something and maybe fix it up, get a better deal. Um, if you're not afraid to work, you can build build your business up. But if you're like us and had to pay your parents off for the farm and actually pay 
above market value for it. It's a struggle to break even every day. That's why we always talk about keeping things simple. Um, the more you can do yourself, the cheaper it is to produce things and uh, it will help you get ahead when you got uh, tight margins on everything. So if you don't mind the noise, you don't mind the hours, you've got a farm, this could be the lifestyle for you. Don't expect to be rich, but it's a good life. It's a hard life, but it's a good life. So as the sun goes down tonight, I'm going to call this a day and hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.